Hi guys, welcome back to another painting tutorial. So today we're going to be moving away from tanks and infantry and we're going to be looking at German aircraft, specifically the ME262. So this is a new release from Battlefront. Uh, it's part of the German Bulge um, and it's a resin kit. It's a really nice kit actually. So I'm going to be starting off by priming this model with Tamiya Fine Surface Primer Light Grey. All the colours I'm using here for airbrushing are going to be Tamiya acrylic as well. So once I've primed it, I'm going to be putting a base coat down of RLM82, which is XF5 flat green and XF2 flat white, both, uh, sorry, one to one. Uh, you can see with that metal mixer that I'm actually counting the drops. So this is fantastic technique. If you're somebody like me that makes a few mistakes, um, and needs to go back and touch anything up. If you're using this mix, uh, sorry, that drop technique for the ratio, it's gonna get that ratio pretty pretty accurate. I'm also using acrylic thinners because these are acrylic paints, and I'm only adding a drop of acrylic thinners into this because I'm using a 0 0.40 millimeter um, needle and nozzle. If I was using a smaller one, I might add a couple more drops in there. Then I'm masking it. So I'm masking the model after I've put that base coat down. Use Google for your inspiration here. This is what I've done, and I've just used a generic sort of masking tape, um, something that's not too adhesive because I don't want the paint to rip up. But the Tamiya paints are pretty sturdy. Then I'm moving on to XF64 Red Brown. This is for RLM81. So I'm going to put two parts of that in there, and then I'm going to put one part XF51, which is khaki drab. Uh, same technique, using that metal mixer to count the drops going in. Um, and making sure that I'm shaking the pots well and um, stirring them really nicely. Again, just adding a drop of thinners into that paint mix and I'm mixing like a madman. And then I'm gonna spray the model. So when you see me spraying the model, um, you're gonna see that I'm spraying sort of top down. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want any of uh, uh, the paint to sort of leak through where I've masked, just in case any of that masking tape is lifted. Then I'm going to spray the bottom using the exact same techniques as the previous um, footage. I'm going to be spraying the bottom RLM65, which is two parts XF23 and one part white. And I'm going to then put a semi-gloss coat or a gloss coat over the model so I can wash it. So once it's ready for a wash, I'm going to be using MIG Black Wash, and I'm going to be pretty generous with this. It's sort of in between a pin wash and just a sort of generic wash. I'm trying to get all those panel lines without making too much mess. I'm somebody that really hates the cleanup process with enamel washes. So the reason we're using the enamel washes uh, is because I find they're a lot better but you must make sure you put that gloss coat down or that semi-gloss coat down. I use a rattle can for that, so it's up to you how you want to do it, but put that gloss coat down before you start using this. Okay, so now this is the cleanup step, so I'm using enamel odorless thinner. I'm just going to put a little bit of that in a palette. I've got some earbuds and I've got an old paintbrush. So I'm going to go, going to um, dip one of those earbuds into that palette and I'm going to wipe off the excess thinners and I'm just going to go around and clean up and you'll see really quickly that all of those panel lines are starting to show nicely without all of the leakage that comes with um, smothering that black wash over those panel lines. It is a really fun and satisfying thing when you see the black panel lines uh, staying nice and dark, but the rest of the, the excess um, wash is coming away. So it's quite enjoyable, but I don't like it when it's too messy. And then if there's a few tricky places to get to and the earbud is, isn't doing the trick, then that's when you'd use your old brush. And that's how it should look. This should look something like that. Don't be afraid if there's a little bit that you, you know, you're, you're not too happy with. And that, remember these aircraft weren't clean unless they've just come straight out of the factory. For someone that's worked on aircraft as well, I can tell you a lot of the aircraft that I've worked on are very dirty. So don't be afraid to have a little bit of, of uh, runaway somewhere. And as I said before, I'm just going over now and just using that old paintbrush and um, earbud just to get any of the difficult places I struggled with.
Then we're moving on to the canopy. So that I'm using Luftwaffe uniform. So now I'm moving on to the Vallejo paints. And I'm just going to give it a nice coat of this. But making sure I'm taking my time. The great thing about aircraft is there's very little you really need to paint once the airbrushing stage and the wash stage has been complete. So make sure you take your time at this, this point because the canopy is what really can make the aircraft pop. So I've put that Luftwaffe blue on, or Luftwaffe uniform blue. I'm now letting that dry and I'm moving to the undercarriage. So the undercarriage is literally just the two tyres there. So I'm going to paint them in black as an initial base coat. Um, again, just take your time. As I said, very few parts with this uh, other than the, obviously the actual aircraft itself. Then I'm putting the black wash. So I'm going to use that black wash for the canopy and the wheels that I just painted. Uh, trying to make sure I get the edges of the canopy. So the bits of the canopy that are, are detailed, I'm going to get the edges there because I want it to be a bit a little bit darker on the edges. Then I'm going back over the canopy in Luftwaffe uniform, but I'm not going on the edges. I'm just, this is where I'm gonna use like a four step process. So I've painted it and now I'm putting on another layer, uh, being quite generous, but making sure that darker bit is on the outer edges of, of the uh, canopy. And then once I'm happy with that, um, I'll move on to the next step. So you can see I'm, I'm making sure that there's just a bit of black there or darker bit, and then I'm moving on to a Luftwaffe uniform foundation white combo. So I start with about mm, about a 50-50 mix, and I start adding straight lines. So I want to simulate this sort of like flying through the sky, a darker sky. I don't want it to be super light blue. You can change it. Out. You can use any color blues that you want. These were, you know, flying at dawn and dusk and times like that, where AA wasn't as as potent. So I'm trying to simulate that. So I'm using this 50-50 mix at the moment and just painting straight lines, not going too close to the outer edges, not going all the way down. So I'm just doing it like about halfway in between the canopy, oh, on each part of the canopy. Then I've moved on to about a 25% um, per Luftwaffe blue and a 75% white, and I'm doing the exact same things. So I'm painting the like, about 30% of the canopy, the top part of the canopy here, where the sort of sun or the clouds would be above it. Again, with those straight lines. And then once that's done, and then I'm adding on a final layer on the very top of it in white and just doing little dabs of it. You want to sort of break it up. It's not going to be a solid color. You just want to add those little sort of dots. It's hard to, it's hard to sort of explain, but you'll see it. Once you start painting it, it will start making sense. Um, and you really like it, and the end picture might give you, sorry, the end video might give you an idea of, of the technique that I used for that. So that's how it should sort of look, should somewhat come out like that. Um, I think that looks quite nice. Uh, it's up to you, it's up to your own taste. Then I'm gonna be undercoating the bombs in German camo black brown. So the two bombs are at the bottom of this. It's up to you if you've modeled them this way, you could have modeled them as just a, a, a fire but I wanted to add the bombs on them uh, just because it gives them a bit of extra flavor. Then I'm going to be base coating the bombs in brown and violet. Uh, I know a lot of the videos I've seen, they're sort of a blue or a light gray, um, but s some of the shots I've seen people have painted with green. I think green makes them stand out a little bit more. So I've gone with the green touch. It's really up to you how you want to paint these, but if you want to paint them in green, then this is the way to do it. Then I'm moving on to German grey. So this is purely a highlight for the undercarriage or the wheels here. So just adding a couple of lines here just to give them a little bit of a highlight. Back on to the wash, uh, the black wash, and I'm using that to um, wash the bombs because there's a few little bits of detail that you can capture there with the wash that um, you might not have been able to with the brush. So like the end bits of the bombs and that. I'm also gonna be using this wash to paint the inner part of the engine um, or the intake uh, just to give it a bit more depth. Then I'm going back over the bombs with brown violet I mean, this might be a little bit overkill for two bombs that you're probably not going to see a whole lot of when it's on the table, but I, 
it, you know, for the sake of a few minutes, I think it, it's it's valid, but it's up to you. Once that's done, I'm going to give it a highlight in Russian uniform World War II. You can also add on a few little extra colours um, to sort of mark what type of bomb it is or, or whatnot. I've seen that there's been like a yellow band around the, the tip of it. I didn't go that crazy, but um, you can do, especially because as I've said, there's not a whole lot to do with these models apart from actually airbrushing them. The rest of it's pretty quick. Now I want to weather it, so I'm going to use the Tamiya Weathering Master and I'm going to start with mud. And I'm just going to be brushing the tip of the wings and the nose cone and the uh, the back of the aircraft, just where it would be taking off. It might be on a dirt strip, for example. Oh, I'm not sure if the, these jets would have been on a dirt strip, but they might have been. Um, and yeah, and along the sides of the canopy there is if the airflow sort of taking it over the over the wing. Again, you don't have to do this if you want to keep it nice and clean, um, you can. And then I'm moving on to soot. So I'm going to just be painting the back of the engines here just a little tiny bit. So you can see that I was dabbing off the excess powder there. I just want to be putting on little touches here. Just enough to make it show, but I want some of that blue to come through as well. Um, you know, I don't want to make it super worn and with oil and all that coming out everywhere and then the f I'm, I'm using a gloss varnish to finish off the canopy but just before I use this gloss gloss varnish I would have put a um, coat of Tamiya flat clear uh, over it just to get rid of the glossy look to the aircraft and then I put the gloss varnish on the, um, the canopy so this is really the final step now um, everything else is done this gloss coat will just give uh, the glass that sort of shiny look that you you really want it to have and then that is the finished product um, it's come out really nicely I really am quite happy with this and the kit really came together quite nicely it's a, it's a really decent kit actually for a resin model um, and a lot of the details there as well uh, but yeah that's it guys that's really it it's, it's a really Quite a simple technique, but one that if, you, if it's done properly can make the aircraft really pop. I really appreciate all the support you've given me. Um, I can't believe I'm past 200 subscribers already. So please, if you're new, like and subscribe. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll catch you at the next one. Thanks, guys.